What if I told you that just by swapping your printer's build plate, you could cut almost half of your energy consumption, print PLA at 26 degrees and still get adhesion so strong it feels like someone smeared glue on the plate. We previously tested a cold plate, the Panda Build Plate Cryo Grip Pro, and we really liked its adhesion. The only downside is that the thing is ugly. It doesn't give you that nice aesthetic. But we get over it with time. And now it's anti skies turn with their cold plate. Hugo brought it straight from Germany because he was at Farm Next. Today I'm going to show you why this chili build plate can be one of the best cost benefit upgrades you can make to your printer. And we'll show you the test I did with PLA, PETG, and even a super articulate model, the Manta Ray. Antin Sky is already well known in the 3D printing world, especially for their variety of accessories compatible with Bamboo Lab. This one here is the cold plate. But why cold? Because according to them, it was designed to work at lower temperatures than standard printing, like 26 to 40 degrees for PLA and 26 to 55 degrees Celsius for PETG. And you know what that means? less energy consumption and less warping thanks to better adhesion. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the plate's construction. It has a traditional magnetic base, super flexible, which helps pop print off after printing. Nothing new there. But things start to get interesting at the top. This plate is textured and made with an almost velvety finish and is treated to be oleophobic. That means oil from your hands, fingerprints and dust affect adhesion way less than on regular paint. If your hand is really dirty, it will still smudge, but that oil comes off much easier than a normal plate. Now, let's talk about the price. It costs about $20 to $30 on Anti-Sky website, but that varies depending on the dollar and shipping. For us, in Brazil, they have a store on AliExpress where it's around $100 Reais with taxes. They have two models, the cold plate and the mate cold plate. The mate version has a rougher texture and doesn't accept other filaments besides PLA and PETG. We are using the cold plate, which works with TPU and ABS too, but it really shines with PLA and PETG. I will leave the link in the description for you to check it out. So, Let's get to the tests. The first thing I did was install the plates on the printer and run calibration. Then you go into the slicer and change the plate type. I had it set it to texture pay plate and I changed it to cool plate. Then you go to your filament, click the three dots, add it, and in the cool plate section you see two values, first layer temperature and other layers temperature. For the first test, I left the first layer at 65 degrees, but changed the others to 26 degrees Celsius, which is the minimum recommended on their website. With the first layer at 65 degrees, which isn't cold at all, everything went fine. After that, the plate cooled to room temperature and dropped to about 28 degrees. I got a little nervous, but the print finished successfully. Before removing the print, I let it sit there for hours and when I finally went to take it off, it was still super stuck but surprisingly hmm, easy to remove. But when I took the print off, I noticed the plate was heavily marked. That was a downside. It's pretty at first, but after printing it gets all marked. I thought those marks might be from the high first layer temperature at 65 degrees. So I jumped straight into the second test. For the second test, I printed a manta ray. It's a complicated print because it has many tiny articulations. And if the plate doesn't have great adhesion, a single link can pop loose and then it's game over. This time I set the first layer to 26 degrees to really push the plate. Now the first layer and the rest were all printed at low temperature. I will admit I was scared, but the manta ray printed perfectly, perfectly, perfect. <laughs> and even hours after finishing, it was still firmly stuck. I really liked. The only thing I didn't like was the marking again. I thought it was because of the high temperature in the first test, but nope. 
it marks easily no matter what. To challenge it even more, I printed a file that's supposed to be an overhang stress test. It has a tiny base and a very steep angle. It's the type of model that will detach instantly if the plate isn't perfect. The test was going extremely well at 26 degrees, but at 96% it detached from the build plate. It was so close to finishing. <laughs> then I increased the plate temperature by 10 degrees and repeated the same test to see if it would hold. This time it printed perfectly and even made that satisfying pop sound when I remove it. Those 10 degrees made a big difference. Now for a torture test. It combines adhesion stress, overhang and in the end prints a top layer uniting everything, which risks misalignment and nozzle crash. And PLA at 26 degrees passed the test easily. The piece stayed on the plate all night and was still well stuck when I remove it. We've already seen that PLA prints fine at 26 degrees in almost every test. So I decided to test PETG. According to their website, it can be printed between 26 and 55 degrees Celsius. But I wanted to push it, so I started at 26 degrees. The first layer looked fine, but as soon as the print started building up, I could tell it was going to detach. I let it fall on its own just to see. And sure enough, it popped off. So I print it again but increase the temperature to 36 degrees. But this time the filament spool fell off. The filament spool fell onto the print and ruined it. <laughs> I print it again and only removed the piece the next day and it was still firmly stuck to the plate. Now let's talk energy savings. Here's how I will show you the data Hugo measure with a watt meter. And will show the real energy saving when using a cold plate. We did this test on the cryogrip, but since the temperature are the same, the energy consumption is also the same because it's the same printer. For PLA, the print took about an hour to one hour and 10 minutes. In the second test, same file, plate at 35 degrees, the result was shocking. You get 50% reduction on cost right away just by changing one print settings and using a different plate. And remember, the Antin Sky plate was printing at 26 degrees, so the consumption would be even lower. For PETG, the first print at 80 degrees and then at 50 degrees, we saw around a 43% reduction. Printer wattage is the same everywhere. What changes is how much you pay for electricity. But the 50% reduction happens anywhere. Imagine a print farm with 10 printers running 12 hours a day. With traditional heated plates, the energy used adds up quickly. By switching the cold plates like this, the overall energy consumption drops around 50%. The savings are enough that the upgrade basically pays for itself over time. If you print occasionally, yes, the adhesion improvements alone make it worth it. If you print PLA and PETG, it's even more worth it because of the energy savings. If you run a print farm, that is no debate. The Antion Sky cold plate surprised us a lot. The adhesion is consistent, it works at extremely low temperature, and it reduces energy consumption in a measurable way. I highly recommend it. That's it folks, if you like this content, leave a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Boo boo!